Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to talk about the description of maternal mortality and some terminologies that we use to describe maternal mortality of different populations. The methods by which maternal deaths are measured is a whole science in itself, but here I will just mention the bare minimum. The vital registration or the civil registration system involves routine registration of births and deaths. Even when coverage is complete and the causes of death are limited and identified based on standard medical certificates, in the absence of active case finding, maternal deaths may be missed or misclassified. And therefore, confidential inquiries are often used to identify the extent of misclassification and misreporting. The other methods involve household survey based methods, which include the sisterhood method, which has been developed by, for identifying uh, through their sisters if any deaths have taken place of women uh, or of their siblings if in the reproductive age group and the circumstances around which these deaths took place. This is generally the standard uh, in, uh, method which is used in demographic health surveys and in cluster surveys. So sisterhood methods may be direct or they may be indirect. Census studies are national census with the addition of a limited number of questions that could produce estimates of maternal mortality. This approach eliminates sampling errors because of the entire population being covered and hence allows a more detailed breakdown of the results, including time trends, geographic subdivisions, and social strata. This approach allows identification of deaths in the household in a rel relatively short reference period, for example, one to two years, thereby providing recent maternal mortality estimates. But usually census is conducted at 10 year intervals and therefore it limits the monitoring of maternal mortality. The results also have to be adjusted for the completeness of births and deaths which are declared in the census and for distortions in age structures in order to arrive at reliable estimates. Verbal autopsy is another method through which maternal deaths can be identified. And again, here, the approach is used to assign the cause of death through interviews with family or community members, where medical certification of cause is not available. The accuracy will depend on the extent of the knowledge which family members may have about the events which led to the death of the woman, the skill of the interviewers, and the competence of physicians who do the diagnosis and the coding. Moving on, we try to understand what are the challenges in measuring maternal mortality. So one of the main challenges which may be present in many developing countries or low middle income countries is that sometimes women's deaths may not be registered at all. And even if the woman's death is registered, the entry may not include information about pregnancy. At times, in very early pregnancy, a woman may not even know that she is pregnant because she may be lactating and may be in a period of amenorrhea. So if she already is anemic and has a hemoglobin of three, four or five grams, and she undergoes uh, early abortion or she has an ectopic pregnancy, she may reach the hospital too late. And therefore, this woman will never be recognized to be a maternal death. Some women in rural areas may not disclose their pregnancy because of shyness. And uh, the only thing that family will know is that she was perfectly all right. And then suddenly she became unconscious, started fitting, and uh, when they reached the hospital, she was already dead. 
So not having post-mortem examinations of, uh, of sudden deaths or, uh, or deaths which are not explainable is also another reason why maternal deaths may not be recognized in many countries. So maternal deaths have been a matter of concern over, over many years, maybe centuries. But, uh, but over the years, the definition of maternal death has become more, much more crystallized and much more clear because in different countries, people may be classifying deaths in a different way. So the definition of maternal death has been very carefully crafted and stated by the United Nations Maternal Mortality Estimation Interagency Group. And in this group, there is representation from the World Health Organization, the United Nations uh, uh, Fund for Children, the United Nations Fund for Population, for Population Development, and the World Bank. And they have classified the death in, in two ways. One way is that the death of a woman while pregnant or within 42 days of termination of pregnancy, irrespective of the duration of the pregnancy and the site of the pregnancy, from any cause related or aggravated by the pregnancy or its management but not from accidental or incidental causes. Another classification is late maternal deaths in which the death may, may, be, uh, may occur after delivery up to a year after the end of pregnancy. So these are the two classifications which are also used uh, in, uh, by different countries, but then they have to state that what definition they are using. Maternal deaths can also be further divided by cause, typically in categories. So direct deaths are those deaths that occur from obstetric complications such as amniotic fluid embolism, preeclampsia, hemorrhage, infection, abortion. Indirect deaths are those that result from some kind of a medical condition which is exacerbated by the pregnant state. So for example, a woman may have cardiac disease but may be functioning at a relatively stable level but when she becomes pregnant then this cardiac status becomes unstable and it may cause the death of the woman if she is not given proper attention. Similarly severe diabetes, hepatitis E, these are all conditions which may be exacerbated by because of the pregnant state. Then there are coincidental deaths where the cause is unrelated to pregnancy for example homicide, road traffic accident and snake bite. So if we look at a population and uh, we, we try to understand how the different estimates of maternal mortalities are made, then let us just have give, take an example of a population of say 50,000 people. In those 50,000 people, possibly there may be only 10,000 women who are of the reproductive age, which is the age between 15 to 49. And during one year, the number of live births in this population may be only 1,000. And in one year, the number of deaths of women as a result of pregnancy may be only two. So it's important to remember here that we have to have a time reference whenever we, we are calculating maternal mortality. And here we are taking a reference of one year. So the first measure of uh, maternal mortality is the rate. And the rate is the number of maternal deaths, which will be direct or indirect, during a time period per 100,000 women of reproductive age during the same time period. This slide is showing a calculation of the maternal mortality rate where the number of deaths is two, and that is the numerator. The number of women of reproductive age is 10,000, and that is the denominator. And then we multiply this with 100,000 to standardize it. So the maternal mortality rate is 20. The maternal mortality ratio is a key performance indicator for efforts to improve the health 
and safety of mothers before, during and after childbirth per country worldwide. So it is an indicator which is used to measure the health of countries. One of the indicators that is used to measure the health of countries, maternal mortality ratio. The, this ratio is the annual number of female deaths per 100,000 live births from any cause related to or aggravated by pregnancy or its management, excluding accidental or incidental causes. We calculate the maternal mortality ratio for that same population. We will refer to the two maternal deaths with a denominator of 1,000 live births and multiply it with 100,000 for the purpose of standardization. And the answer is 200 maternal mortality ratio. So what is the difference between the rate and the ratio? For the rate, the denominator is the number of women in the reproductive age group. For ratio, the denominator is the number of live births. In ratio, the numerator is different from the denominator. Obviously, ratio is a better representative of maternal mortality. And authorities worldwide use ratio to compare countries and rank them for health performance. Some other measures which are used include fertility rate and birth rate. The fertility rate at a given age is the number of children born alive to women of that age during the year as a proportion of the average annual population of women of the same age. Birth rate is defined as the number of live births per 1000 women in the total population. For the population in an area to remain stable, the overall total fertility rate of 2.1 is required to stabilize the population. This is assuming there is no immigration or emigration taking place. A skilled birth attendant is a midwife, a physician or an obstetrician or a nurse or other healthcare professional who provides essential and emergency health services to women and their newborns during pregnancy, childbirth and the postpartum period. So looking at the historical perspective of global attention to mothers and to the health of mothers during pregnancy and childbirth, the Safe Motherhood Initiative was launched at an international conference in Nairobi in 1987. And this initiative was launched by the World Health Organization. Subsequently, in the year 2000, the Millennium Development Goals also focused on maternal mortality reduction. And this was done through the MDG 5, in which improvement of maternal health was a target for reducing the maternal mortality ratio by three quarters. Despite important limitations, the Millennium Development Goals have focused global attention and monitoring. In 2015, these goals were then replaced by the Sustainable Development Goals. And in the Sustainable Development Goals, the target 3.1 states that maternal mortality by 2030 should reduce the global maternal mortality ratio to less than 70 per 100,000 live births. This actually means that for a population of women who have live births, a 1,000 population of live births, there should be hardly one maternal death or even less than one maternal death. The Pakistan Demographic Health Survey in 2019 was conducted 
and in this con in this survey households were approached and deaths of women who were ever married were investigated the households reporting a female death then underwent a verbal autopsy and according to the pakistan health survey One hundred and eighty-six deaths per one hundred thousand live births were calculated for the three-year period before the survey. Regionally, there were some differences in the maternal mortality ratio point estimates, but the confidence intervals overlapped, indicating that the differences were not statistically significant. So, this concluded. that maternal mortality ratio has declined from 2006 and 2007 at that point in time it was 276 and therefore it has reduced from 276 to 186 so statistically speaking one can do a number of objections to these calculations but however this is what the figures that we have to show for the different surveys that were done in different points in time a lot of investigators have tried to understand the causes of maternal mortality in pakistan and uh, these causes can be differentiated into socio economic causes medical causes and causes related to health system but generally the important causes are poverty uh, low literacy levels poor health status of women at the start of pregnancy for example anemia early early marriages as a result of which women enter into child bearing at a very young age high fertility rates lack of awareness of the importance of medical care during pregnancy and childbirth lack of antenatal care early and lack of early detection of alarming signs and timely referral of patients to emergency services lack of quality services available around the clock lack of transportation facilities and many more with this we come to the end of the video if you like this video please like subscribe share and comment press the bell icon so that you are notified of all videos as they are released this channel needs your subscription to stay alive so we hope that you will do the subscription and help us thank you very much